Marcus Sargent sent a letter to the then Queen Elizabeth II at Buckingham Palace and in that letter he warned her not to take part in the upcoming Trooping of the Colour. He said there was an assassin lying in wait all set up to kill her. Now, the Queen Elizabeth did take part in that Trooping of the Colour because the letter arrived three days late. And you all know the one I'm talking about, don't you? It was in 1981. And Marcus Sargent, the writer of the letter, shot six blanks at the Queen at pretty close proximity as she was riding her beautiful black mare Burmese down the mall. Now, Lance Corporal Alec Galloway, who wasn't even meant to be on duty that day, leapt over the barricade towards his 17-year-old. Now, he knew, he said, that they were blanks at that stage, but he grabbed him by the hair, pulled him over the barricade so he landed heavily on the road and he kicked him in the head, pretty much laying him out until the police came and took over. And a wag in the crowd yelled out, you're pretty slow with your bayonet there, mate. It sounds like an Aussie, doesn't it? <laughs> so why am I bringing up this exciting story? Well, I am reading a fantastic book, Royal Service, My 12 Years as Valet to Prince Charles by Stephen Barry. And there are so many fantastic insights from this book. Now, it's not salacious at all. He just tells his story in a very respectful manner. But you manage to get sort of behind the scenes, particularly on the Yacht Britannia, particularly on the way the whole palace and the royal family conduct and work. And also it gives us an insight into the very young then Prince Charles, because prior to Stephen Barry actually becoming his valet, uh, Prince Charles never had one. And it seems to be very successful. I mean, Stephen Barry was sort of learning as Prince Charles was sort of learning to become more princely and to be more adult. And he also takes us through those very early days of the then Prince Charles courtship with Lady Diana Spencer. Now today, in today's video, I'm going to tell you about that uh, awful incident in the mall with the Queen because Prince Charles comes back to the palace after that trooping of the colour. And so we get an insight into his reaction and his fear and his worry when he actually tells Stephen Barry what happened. On June 11th, 1981, Trooping the Colour took place on a glorious, hot and sunny day. Now then he talks about Prince Charles coming back to Buckingham Palace to his apartment at 12.30 p.m. after the ceremony. He was wearing his Welsh Guard scarlet tunic and for him, he looked hot and bothered. Now, Stephen Barry didn't know anything that had gone down because he'd been busy packing and getting ready because Prince Charles was going to go off to a polo match and another sort of overnight trip after this. So he was packing for him and getting his polo uniform ready. He was totally unaware of any of the drama. He handed me his sword and began wrenching at the gold buttons of his tunic. Do you know what happened? He asked. I had no idea what happened. And then he says about how he's packing and getting ready for the polo. And then he says he assumes that some guardsman just fainted from the heat because as you know, <laughs> this is in the height of summer. It was a hot and sunny day. And pretty much every year, a guardsman faints at the trooping of the colour. Actually, when that happens, I always think that maybe they should have a summer uniform or either move it to a cooler month because someone always goes down, don't they, from heat stress. Some idiot fired shots at the Queen. Oh my God, I said, shocked, and hesitated before asking tentatively, is everything all right? And then Charles says, fine, there were blanks as it happened. He, that, I mean, that's amazingly composed. If someone even shot blanks at my mother, I mean, they're so used to being stoic and, and just brave, aren't they? I mean, I would be a screaming mess, I would imagine. He was wrestling his way out of the tight tunic while I tried to help. So I guess that's his nerves and, it, you know, adrenaline showing because he just couldn't manage the buttons or anything. The noise startled the horses, but the Queen managed to stay in control. He shook his head. It makes one realise how vulnerable one can be. 
And then he goes on to say, well, indeed, they were actually very vulnerable because prior to that, you know, there was the assassination of Lord Louis Mountbatten. And isn't it extraordinary that even though that happened in 1981, the Queen kept riding Burmese down the mall in the Trooping of the Colour for another five years. He didn't retire to 1986. Now, what? no one could blame her for thinking that there might be someone with a real gun, you know, in future years or for even for her to lose her nerve or be worried about it or to want more protection. But she just carried on. And she didn't retire from riding in the Trooping of the Colour because of herself. She retired from riding when Burmese retired when he was actually put out to pasture in Windsor Great Park and he enjoyed uh, about four years of freedom just running around the green fields until he died, she just kept going. And when he retired, she switched to a carriage. Now, the official story is that she did that because um, she couldn't be bothered training up another mare. But we all know why she did it. She didn't want to do the Trooping of the Colour anymore without her beautiful friend, Burmese. After the Queen died, Alec Galloway did shed a genuine tear and he walked to the gates of Windsor with some flowers and he actually spoke to a reporter after he'd laid the flowers. And he said very heartfelt with with a shake in his voice, it's been an honour and a privilege to serve you, Mark. I'm going to tell you more from the Royal Service book. Now, don't get nervous because it doesn't tell you anything that you don't particularly want to hear. It just tells you uh, really interesting things. I mean, there are some juicy tidbits, and but nothing salacious or awful. And um, I'll enjoy sharing them with you in the next video. Bye.